some of the doubts I have in healing, uh, or at least had, especially at the beginning as I was seeing things uh, for the first time, uh, the first thing I thought was, yeah, right, uh, sure, they're healed. Well, what does the doctor say? Like, I mean, have they gotten this thing checked out? Like, where's the evidence? You know, I wanted to see. I'm like, well, I'll believe them when they can prove it. Um, and then sometimes I would think, well, maybe it's just psychosomatic. Maybe they're just thinking themselves into healing. And I mean, I was here training with the healing ministry team and everyone's watching the same video to see these people being healed. And I'm like thinking, yeah, <laughs> you know, like really, is this what's happening? Um, th these are the thoughts that I was having because I'm human and it's hard to believe in these things. I found answers to that doubt in, in prayer and in conversation with God and specifically in the act of surrendering my doubts to God, like all of, all of the faith that I have is a gift. I didn't create this faith in me to believe the Lord, the Lord did it for me. He gave me the gift of faith. And so if I have any doubts, then they're, then they're his problem. <laughs> they're, they're his to deal with. And so in prayer, I would surrender it to him. I would say, Lord, I don't know about this. I don't know about, I mean, you know, there's not enough evidence and all of the doubts that I just, you know, that I described, I would think these things. And then I would say, Lord, that is yours. I give you the doubt. I give it to you. I surrender it to you. Give me more faith. And then I would ask for more faith. Um, and the father who loves us and wants to give good gifts to us. And faith is a wonderful gift. He's going to give us this faith if we ask him for it, but it takes that act of humble surrender. I think surrender of any kind, I think is very, very challenging. It takes strength. It takes uh, a humility that I do not have most of the time. It's very, very hard to be vulnerable um, in, in front of God or in front of other people to admit that I don't have it all together, that I don't have it all figured out. Um, and that's what I'm doing in that surrender is being like, Lord, I don't understand, uh, but I give it to you and I trust that you will give me what I need. The things I've seen is really what has increased my faith more than anything. I've seen people touched emotionally. I've, I've experienced um, where someone will just receive uh, the words that, that someone is speaking so deeply in their heart. Like it's just exactly what they needed to hear, that there's no way that anyone in the room could have known, no amount of human knowledge could accomplish. So I've seen these miracles occur with physical healings and emotional healings and release and just the peace and the freedom that it brings afterwards. Um, when we experience that in the group, there's just no denying that the Lord has moved there. Hello, small group community. That was Mark Terrell sharing his process of kind of going from like extreme doubt when it came to this topic of healing to believing in it. And Mia, you kind of had a front row seat to that process. Yeah, what a great way to start this series, just showing transformation um, from kind of interested, curious, and but skeptical, um, learning, pushing back, doubting, and then uh, really where he is now. Um, he believes he's he's seen God move. Um, it's 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 a process and a transformation. Yeah. So throughout these series, will be the series will be showing little testimonies before all the small group podcasts. So we thought that was a great one to start out with. And yeah, again, we're all in process. We're all growing. We're all learning. And you know, speaking of learning, you know, you've learned a lot about this topic. But when one of our questions is, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about this topic? <laughs> Um, super excited. I, I, this is kind of such a dream come true to be able to uh, speak about it at length deeply, you know, for six weeks or so for Lent. And um, to tie it to Lent, too, is amazing because there's uh, the verse Tom mentioned today, um, you know, Isaiah 53, 5, by his wounds, we have been healed. And the ramifications of that are huge. But really, God um, is all about healing. He wants healing for all of us, and he wants to use um, us believers to bring that to the world. And you're, you kind of came to that because your own personal healing. Yeah, I wasn't looking for it. God sort of was ready for me to, uh, to learn about it, um, by accident really. And, um, I would have, I was able to help, um, a woman, a, a stranger that I didn't know, uh, pray for her, not knowing what to do or if I believed anything about this um, and God's so gracious he he didn't even really need me to have any faith but just um, to sort of be obedient and a woman uh, received 
pain relief. Um, so it just opened my eyes completely. Yeah. And then healed you too of your neck from a car yep, accident. Yeah, I received yeah. physical healing from my neck. Yep. Um, again, wasn't looking. So you could say I was kind of skeptical too. Yeah. At the beginning. I, and I, you know, I still, yeah, I, I kind of feel like you're at a 10 in believing all this <laughs> and I'm a, I'm, I'm probably a six, you know, I, I, enough that it's outside my comfort zone. So it's okay if that's where you are too. Yep. It's, it's okay to say that in your group, but uh, just where you are, and, and we want you to have a chance to express that. Uh, then we talked about this passage this weekend. Jesus goes into a, uh, the synagogue, and there's a man with a withered hand, and um, he asks the Pharisees and, and the Herodians, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or to do good or to do harm, to save a life? In other words, we know they opposed this healing, but they were silent. And as a result, we're told, uh, he looked around them in anger, grieved at their hardness of heart. And so a little bit of like, how do how can we become hard-hearted on this? That we, when it comes to healing, just mentioned this weekend, we can become hard-hearted. Have you ever had an experience of that? Or wh- what do you think are the opportunities to be hard- hard-hearted? I mean, yeah. we both have. You mentioned Rob today. You know, the whole church was praying for his healing, and he didn't receive healing. That was really hard. That um, disappointment, we prayed with a woman, a lovely woman, um, for a while and uh she ended up dying as well that that is a blow to to so sometimes ex- just experience or past yeah. failure or yeah. past failures sure. i'll put in quotes in the sense of who knows i mean it, I, yeah. I think i love you know some of the people you know like you had me read they just they they're they're they just are so resilient and they keep going they don't they don't let it stop them and so but it we can become hard-hearted um I think for me, kind of the hard thing is, yeah, I think the, like, kind of I said, the pride, hey, I'm fine. Like, to me, I don't want to admit the weakness that mm-hmm. maybe personally I need mm-hmm. healing in certain parts, or I think I should be tough enough or strong enough on my own to figure it out. Um, and then probably again for me, and I, you know, I said a lot about this <laughs> this weekend, so, but hey, like, I just kind of feel like you should be able to figure things out when someone else needs healing. It's not my first thought of compassion. So, um, those are some of my hard heartedness. Yeah. Um, um, you know, some other ones out there too talked about just uh, yeah, fear of disappointment, fear of looking stupid, pride. Um, um, sometimes not even believing that God still does these things or God wants to. We have so much great medical care and knowledge. Why why do we need God anymore? That's and yeah. I think that's kind of a thing that we have in our sort of current modern day. Yeah, so. I think that's another thing too. We we, yep. we don't want we almost don't want to need God. I'm gonna think we'll talk about it a little bit more next week. We almost mm-hmm. wish in our pride again we could do it all on our own. Yeah, self reliance. So. <laughs> so. Uh, that's something else out there. So hopefully you get a chance to share about that. Um, but Jesus does say, stretch out your hand. He stretched out his hand and it was restored. Jesus can still work through uh, that kind of hard heartedness because uh, of his tenderness. And then kind of the passage concludes, the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. So craziness, but that was just a reminder to us there is opposition to healing what do you see in opposition to healing, Mia, in, in the healing team, and what comes against it, and how do you guys overcome it? I mean, I, I think all opposition to God and God's plans and God's people is 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 from our common enemy, which is not a person; it's a spiritual entity. Um, you know, the devil and his fallen angels. I don't know how that works in with everybody's case particularly, but I know that's a we've been warned enough also in Scripture, you know, by Saint Paul to. Um, just resist and you know stand um, armored up from the Lord um, using the weapons that we have. So that's that's one opposition. I think another uh, and another way that kind of comes through too is when people actually receive healing. Sometimes you'll have people very reluctant to tell others about it right, because they right. don't want to be mocked. They don't want to you know they think it's all in their head. They um, there's mental pushback sometimes yeah. to actually share your story. They don't story. want to jinx they don't, it. They don't, they don't want to jinx it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like and watching, they, yeah, yeah. yeah, they don't want to jinx it. And they also don't want the spotlight. Like I'm popping myself up or I'm, you know, look what God did for me. Mary, Mary, the mother of God said like, you know, people are going to be talking about me for all ages. You know, that's the, because of the things God did for her. So we're, what do we sing that song tonight? Magna, let Christ be magnified. So that, but the, I think, the self doubt comes in, you know, like no, 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 just be quiet, don't talk about. Yeah, that. so I guess you know we look, talk about spiritual forces. That can sound scary to people, but it looks like fear. Some of the things we're saying in the hard hardness can look like fear, can look like doubt, it can look like, um, you know, anxiety or worry that you know I'm going to jinx it. Yeah. Like, and 
And um, again, those are again we would say those are all tools of spiritual forces. Sometimes yeah. I think people are in our way, and I, you know, I, I would say again, it's more we want to we want to not l- blame people, but yeah. people can get in. They can say things. If you think about Jesus sometimes in healing people, right? When he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, what does he do? They were laughing at him when he said, "She's not dead; she's right. just sick." Yep. And he get out, <laughs> he like gets right. them yeah. out of the right. room. Yeah. It wasn't that Jesus didn't love them, but he's yeah. like, "You guys are getting in the way here." Yep. So there can be sometimes people that get in the way, That's right. and again, not to not love them, but they're they're, they're opposition, they're distractions. Or, so yeah. um, faith is needed. You said that tonight. There, there's. I think sometimes I mean, God has all the faith in the world. So there, there's that, but. Um, Sometimes unbelief, doubt, things like that can can impact, you know how how bold we go before God in, in our prayer. Yeah. So in, in the message talked about again three goals for the series. Um, one that um, we just wake up a little bit. You know, as I talked about, you've awakened me to a lot of this too. To receive the healing God has for us, and three as a community, maybe people are going to want to join the healing team. We're going to see, hopefully we see in groups that people can be praying for the people in their groups and we can be agents of healing for one another. What do you, what do you hope gets out of this? Yeah, I hope all those things happen. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody just um, is open that that's it. Like any, we talked about surrender, all, any doubts, oppositions, whatever, like what we could give that, that the community gives that to God, let him deal with that, but just be open um, that we really are moved to fully trust and believe God for the healing that we each need. Um, we can see it when someone else needs healing. You know, that's that's kind of clear. But um, the other thing is, yeah, can you imagine if um, people go out and um, wherever they're going, shopping or um, in their small groups, wherever, or here on campus, and they just stop and they pray for each other and just start to see God move in a radical way. Yeah, and I do hope, and as much as... I. I don't know if I made fun of you tonight and <laughs> tell that story how you felt. I I, hopefully I looked like I was the villain because I was. You were was you were bold. Funny. But I do hope I think there's a lot of people out there who have your boldness and maybe I sort of want that boldness, although I, it's you know, to stop and be praying for people. And you know, I was listening to a podcast today about and I think this is what you say often, when it comes to the gospel, it both needs to be proclaimed and it needs to be shown in action. And they had, they said it a little bit better than that. But there's action and there's proclamation. Mm-hmm. And and that this is an opportunity for people to really coming to know Jesus because those two are going together. We can't stop preaching. Like I, and that's what I like to do. You know, that's right. what I like to do. But seeing the, Jesus in action and really change people's hearts. Um, and I really do want to. I hope there's some miracle stories out of this I series. I hope there's hope some so. stories yeah. of and some miraculous that are miracles that everybody would recognize sort of as miracles. And then the miraculous maybe of there's marriages on the brink. There's family relationships that are just awful and terrible and that you know it it, maybe where other people wouldn't say well that wasn't a miracle but you will know it's only because god came in and brought that healing we want to see that happen in our community because as that happens that's going to draw people to jesus and that's going to draw people to the church because you can we're talking about jesus but we're also demonstrating him that's the whole point of when the the apostles said you know we can't stop talking about what we've seen and then they go to pray, you know, stretch out your hand, Lord, and do these signs and wonders so that everyone can glorify you. And it's that's it's preaching about what Jesus does and then showing people what he can do and what he wants to do. Yeah. So the, the last question then, and this might even kind of go to that, um, what do you want to see healing? What are you looking for personally to be healed well, in our family? Well, definitely in our, in, our, in our family, we have um, one or two kids that I, I think they I think they do kind of need some um, – emotional healing or um, spiritual healing, I would say, and that that would result in a uh, just an encounter with the Lord that they would really know God's love. W- with the healing I want to see at church is I would love to see diseases gone and result tests come back, like um, with with healing showing there and just, yeah, I would love to see all <laughs> that too. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd love to see that per- yeah, personally. Some family dynamics. I gotta heal my shoulder, so <laughs> I have a little my shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> and I, we we do hope. I mean, and this is gonna be pushing. But if someone's bold enough, hey, if there's people who have something a, a wound right now today, pray for that person. Um, yeah. uh, just just pray for their healing. Don't be afraid to, to speak up for that. Um, Mia, any last thoughts? Or are you ready to pray for us? 
Yeah, no, just just go for it. Um, God loves bold faith. He was always impressed with bold faith, you know, and, and the one that he found it in wasn't even a, a Jew when he was walking around. It was a centurion, and, and he, he was totally amazed when he said, you don't even have to come to my house. Just say the word right there. That is bold faith. So um, I, I say go for it. <laughs> go for it and tell us about it. <laughs> All right, why don't you pray for us? Okay, mm-hmm. so um, Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to see you glorified in a whole new way. I ask that you'd send your Holy Spirit to everybody watching this video, wherever they are, whether they're in our community or online. God, I just ask that you would stretch forth your hand and do signs and wonders, that you would um, touch people that desperately need a touch from you, God, that you would use everybody who's willing, and that you would just show them just all that you have for them, how, how they're going to be healed themselves and how you want to use them to bring your healing to the world around them. Father, I just thank you in advance for all you're going to do. And we praise you and glorify you and pray this all in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Thanks for participating in small groups. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. You can be part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples simply by sharing this video. We're so grateful you're part of our community.